yeah, they're giving up that little bit in top speed now, but at least they're able to battle with the other riders. Obviously, race tracks are always made up of short straights and long straights. On the long straights, you can give up quite a bit of ground as long as you've got that good acceleration. That means you can exit the corners well onto the shorter straights. We've seen that at different times with different bikes where they may not have the outright top speed, but they've been able to accelerate well, make up for it. The BMW couldn't really do that last year, and uh, at least this year it looks like they have made a bit of a step forward, but we still haven't really seen them in the battles this season. Obviously Sykes in Estoril and uh, Porto Mau did a good job of being able to keep himself in the battles, but we never really saw him able to attack. Presumably the gearing has uh, some effect on that as well in World SBK. Yeah, you have a fixed gear ratio through the course of the season. You're able to change the gearing from circuit to circuit, but the ratios have to stay the same. So sometimes you're set up for a little bit too long on a circuit or a little bit too short. It makes it a little bit more of a challenge. Chaz Davis said after uh, practice last week that uh, Ducati have obviously decided to focus a lot of their attention on Aragon. All the other teams will have done the same because with two races here, it really is crucial to get the gearing right for this section of the racetrack, uh, or this uh, part of the season. And uh, they've been a little bit different compared to how they would have geared that bike in the past, he said. Yes, uh, inevitably, uh, Aragon is effectively a, a quarter of the season with uh, two rounds out of the uh, scheduled eight. Less than four minutes remaining in free practice two. And as we head into our final set of stints, it's Michael Ruben Rinaldi who leads us by three tenths of a second. He's also the fastest man in the overalls. Then it's this man, Jonathan Ray in second, three tenths of a second down. And uh, we ride on board with him now. Yeah, down in towards turn one, back down to second gear through here. You want to make sure you're able to get over to the left-hand side of the tracks so that you open up for turn two. You come through here, you're cry rising up through the the crest in towards three. You want to get in the gas nice and early. This is where we've been able to see a lot of riders use an exit from three to really attack into four and five. Jonathan were able to make a move through there on Rinaldi who got out of the way for him, but it really is a case of trying to hook up those first couple of corners. You can use that to try and attack down in towards turn five. Turn seven, another real overtaking opportunity here as well. You can barge down past the inside of different riders. So it's important for the riders to use the practice session as well to be able to get used to being around different riders in traffic because we've seen that some riders just tend to try and spend their time on their own in practice and then once they're in a battle in the race, they can almost be a little gun shy. We've uh, heard from the likes of Bautista who said that generally in close quarters combat, he and the uh, the Honda struggle. So uh, perhaps that's, that's an example right there. We uh, rejoin Jonathan Ray on board. He's two tenths of a second down at present on uh, his previous best time in this session. Yeah, and for Jonathan, it's just about his consistency. And when we get to the end of the session and we see his analysis, it'll be interesting to see how his uh, volume of fast laps really compares to what we've seen from Rinaldi. Both of them have had a clear edge over the rest of the field in terms of their outright pace, but also their consistency so far today. Rinaldi then uh, is the man to beat. Jonathan Ray has gained ground in the uh, third sector. We'll see what he can do in the final sector now. You can see there for Ray into the last corner now as well, but uh, he tends to give up time to Rinaldi in this final sector. We'll see if he's been able to make a bit of a step forward through this sector. He's been given up two, three tenths of a second to Rinaldi all the way through today's running, and again gives up three tenths of a second. Maybe ran in a little bit deep down in towards those last corners as well there for Ray, but uh, still able to set a good lap time there. He's still able to set a time that's pretty much as fast as Chaz Davis's time. So for uh, Jonathan Ray, that's at least good consistent pace. Yes, yeah, so and not far from his fastest in this session either, actually, Jonathan Ray. Yeah, he's only a few tenths of a second off of, his, or sorry, a few hundredths of a second off of his fastest time. So Ray's pace looks very consistent. He's still got time for at least one more lap. Ominous for the remainder of the field, of course, not least for this man, Scott Redding, who's trying to hunt him down in the championship. He comes across the line to set a uh, new personal best time for today. Outright, that's a 150.859 and uh, that's fifth fastest in this session. It's also ninth in the overalls. Yeah, so for Scott Redding, still he will know that he needs to make a bit of a step forward. The good thing for him is in the warmer conditions, he's looking more competitive than he did in this morning session. Still uh, more than a second away, of course, from that time from, uh, from Jonathan Ray from earlier on. Yeah, and uh, that's what's going to be the worrying thing for Scott Redding. In this session, though, he's only half a second off the pace. So at least in the hotter conditions, giving himself half a chance. 
Marco Melantri having moved up to uh, 14th in this session. Hardly uh, high-flying exploits, but it is an improvement. And uh, he will be glad uh, not to finish right down the uh, lower reaches of the order as he makes his way back into the pits. That will be session over for him. 30 seconds until the chequered flag falls. Eugene Laverty on an improved lap here. Yeah, Laverty down in 11 fastest right now, which is 12th fastest on the combined times of 51.4. He hasn't improved during this session, so this might be a lap time that gives him an opportunity to do that, but he's going to need almost a, a flawless run to the line to be able to do that. Yes, he's got uh, three tenths of a second to find compared to his time from earlier on here today. Jonathan Ray is on a decent lap, comes towards the line. It's a 150.651, that's his fastest of this session. So it's less than three tenths of a second. Here's uh, gap to Michael Ruben Rinaldi as the checkered flag falls. Laverty remains 11th for the session, not seeing uh, a huge amount of yellow or even red times in terms of riders hoping to improve in the closing stages. So it does look very much as though we're going to finish FP2 with Rinaldi ahead of Ray, and uh, that's how they'll finish at the end of Friday's overalls as well.